A class library is a collection of classes, uh, every one of which uh, contains some methods or properties that can be reused uh, by other programmers in their projects. Let's see in this video how to create a class library and then how to import it to an application. To create a class library, we must create a new project library and if you search here I have my DLL for Nate framework. A class library in C sharp or in Windows environments is usually packed into DLLs although you could also find it into exe files. Click next. So I'm gonna create a class library for instance for math operations, maths. All right, as you see, the structure of this solution, it contains a solution and one project. This project is the class library and it's got no program CS class which I can execute when I build the project. It's just classes. I'm gonna put some classes here and then I will build the project. A DLL file will be created and that DLL file, I could import them from another applications or projects and use the classes and methods that I have here. The usual thing to do is to delete this class by default that comes here and add the class. Okay. So I'm going to say, for instance, arithmetic operations. Yeah. So I'm going to use this class to provide very simple arithmetic operations. Let's add the addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. A class could also include some fields. What I have to do now to build this project is just build solution. If I start, nothing is executed, no console application, no Windows Forms application, no user interface in this application. It's just a collection of classes, every one of which has a set of methods and variables or constants in this case. So to see where is my DLL now? In the project path, bin folder, a debug, here I have my maths.dll. In fact, what we usually do is when we have a, an application is finished or a class library is finished, we build a release. And to build a release, we have to change uh, the release. But I just have to build the solution and now in my release folder, I have the debug and the maths DLL. So in this DLL, I have one class, eh? it could be more, but now I have one class with four methods and a constant. I can use this DLL now from another project or from another application. Let's see how. I will just copy it. Uh, usually it could be packed into a zip file and uploaded to the internet or to GitHub or to whatever website you wanted and the user will download it and extract it and uh, save it into a, a folder in, in its computer. Let's create now a new solution, create a new project and see how we can use the code inside that DLL. For instance, I'm going to add a Windows Forms app.net framework, like calculator. I'm building a calculator. So imagine I am okay getting this DLL. 
in my downloads folder. I download it here and I want now to build here a calculator. So imagine we didn't have plus operator to add two numbers. Result equals operand one plus operand two. Yeah? Imagine we didn't have this operator. We will want to use the method we have built in our library. Let's see. First of all, we have to add a reference to our library, to our DLL. How do, do, do I add a reference to a project? Well, if you see in every project, there's a references subfolder. And here are all the libraries that I am using in this particular project. To add a reference, a new reference, I just right click, select that reference, and from here, yep, I can say browse. There are some that come the, uh, with .NET framework, the libraries, add in, I bring it to downloads, and the maths DLL. Yes, maths DLL. So I say OK, and now I have my maths DLL, which you see here has the properties and the folder where it is. It is usually copied to a system folder in my program files on, or, or, or in the user folder app data or program data uh, to find it easily, not in the downloads folder. Or in, if it, there are important DLLs into the Windows folder, Windows system. So I have this DLL loaded in here and I just have now to add the using maths. You see the namespace using the classes which are in the namespace maths. Remember, when we created our maths application, we created also a namespace, which it was a namespace maths. So I'm using now the, name, the functions in the namespace maths. And thus, I can ac access from here to my maths class. So as it is a class, I need an object, arithmetic operations, it was the, the name of the class, operations, for instance, equals new arithmetic operations. So I am instancing now yeah, an object of this class that I have to use here. And now I have to say, well, to use it, I have to say result equals like operations. This is my object. And this object has, well, that divide, multiply, and subtract methods that I have defined plus the ones that has inherited from object equal, you say these four methods are always present because they are inherited from the object class, which is the big class. So here I will have to use the add. So the operand A, so it would be like operand one and oper operand two. And this I am using an object of my class, which is in a DLL, in a library, to perform the function I needed and I didn't have. The same with the other methods, but subtract. So, we can execute this. This is an application with user interface that is using a library, like for instance 5 plus 13 solve, it's 18. So I am not using the plus operator in here, I am using the add function from a 
object which is in a class I have created and packed in a DLL. Uh, class libraries are very important and they are used, well, all .NET framework is in class libraries, in DLLs, yes. All the methods we use from uh, like int parse, yeah, int is a class and parse is a method defined in a library, they are, they are in a library. Form1 is a class, yes, and form is a class, that is, which is where in system windows forms, form namespace, which is in a library also. And uh, everything we use, uh, all this using, are in DLLs and in libraries. Everything we use is already built by other people, the Microsoft programmers, or people like us. It's a way of reducing code. Controls are usually packed in DLLs. Okay? We have the controls provided by Visual Studio or by the Microsoft.NET Framework, Windows Forms, but we can import more controls that other developers have created. One of the things is usually done with helper methods like this is to create static methods to be able to use these methods without creating a new object. How do I make add, subtract, multiply and divide static? I think you already should know. If I go to my math class, I just say that this is a public static int add method. And now add is a static method, okay? And these are not. What is the difference? Okay, let's make add and subtract. Okay, what will be the reference? This, I can access them with the name of the class, just writing the name of the class and then writing a dot, and this will be accessible directly without instantiating any object of this class. But to use these ones, I should also instantiate any object of the class. Yep. Also, and also this, this constant here. So, if I build the release, build solution, I, shall, I should copy again my new version and paste it. I find it, then I will reopen my calculator. I have to update the reference. Or, well, I think it is this in the same folder. There is no need to update, but see now, yeah? There's no need to update, but I am accessing the add method and the subtract method from an object, and this is not allowed. Now, to access the add method, I have to use directly the arithmetic operations class yep dot at and here the same so struct you see here I can use only the add the start and well I can access the const without no need, no need for to do it static because it's just a const a constant um, so I have the add and the stop but I don't have the multiply and divide for the multiply and divide I need to instantiate an object but for using the add and subtract I don't need to instantiate any object in uh, so if I didn't need uh, any of these operations this there was no need to instantiate an object, and this will work the same. So this is an example of when to use static methods. So this was just to be familiar with the class libraries, because to reduce components or controls, we're going to use libraries and references a lot. Thanks for watching, as always. Any question, you can ask in the video comments. Please, bye-bye.